Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Welcome back to the show. I'm answering questions today, two questions about basically like supplementation and HRT. Are herbal supplements of any value? And um, a listener has a specific question about their case for HRT, but I wanted to bring that up because for some reason, we have actually had a lot of um, inquiries from people who are actually finishing or in the middle of or, of or about to start um, hormone replacement therapy. And that's kind of weird that we're getting this influx of people asking those questions. So I feel like we might be starting to draw in um, maybe a wider audience unintentionally who, so, so I, we need to give more education um, on that and whether or not you can pursue it, um, HA recovery, going down those tracks and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna start with this question by Kira. Um, she actually emailed me back in May, so I am sorry that it's taken so long. And I'm gonna read off the screen here, but she says, hi Danny. I'm currently 26 and I came off the contraceptive pill over four years ago. I haven't had a natural period since then. Around that time, my weight dropped from 59 kilos to 43 kilos. That's a big drop. I had my bloods checked last year and they showed that both my hormones and thyroid were all relatively low. The gynecologist ruled out other issues and confirmed it was likely HA due to the weight loss. At this point, I had gained enough weight to achieve a healthy BMI, 19.8, and the gynecologist believed my cycle should return if I continued to increase my calories and cut back on exercise. Because the email keeps going, I'm just going to pause there and say 19.8, um, while not, oh my gosh, you're like so thin that I'm concerned. Um, we regularly see women really do need to be well and truly above 20, um, more like 23 and above, especially if they have come from such a weight loss background. 19.8, um, getting that number stuck in your head that that's, that's all I should need to gain in terms of body fat in order to be fertile, that is not serving you. Okay, she said, I recently went for a DEXA scan and the results showed I have osteopenia even more reason that you need more food and body fat. I received damaging advice from the National Health Service to ensure I exercise regularly and keep my weight low to prevent this progressing to osteoporosis. I knew this was the wrong advice and went back to the gynecologist who confirmed this was a result of my continued low hormones. The gynecologist suggested I take contraceptive pills again or HRT. However, I told the gynecologist I was hesitant to take the contraceptive pill again. I had taken it two years ago and it seemed to just mask the fact I didn't have a natural cycle and caused weight fluctuations, which made my body image worse. I instead, oh, so instead she has asked my GP to prescribe HRT, hormone replacement therapy, Femiston and Elest. Elest? Do you know much about these medications? No, I do not. Um, but they're likely estrogen and progesterone. I throw a wild guess out there. I'm working towards HA recovery. I've largely cut back on exercise and increased my calorie intake, and I have increased my weight slowly over the past year, but it is taking time. I'm currently around 50 kilos, but I know I have further to go to get to my natural set point. I'm worried about the negative effects of my low hormones and the lasting effects they could cause in the meantime. For example, continued bone loss density, bone density loss, um, and cognitive decline but I don't want to be on HRT forever. Would you agree that it's the right decision to take HRT to protect my bones? Or will this just mask the fact that my cycles haven't returned, make it harder for my periods to return naturally? I would really like to hear your input. I really appreciate the community you are creating and all the awareness you've provided for HA recoverers. Thank you. So this is a tough one. I'm not a doctor, I'm not your doctor, and I can't override your doctor's medical advice. Disclaimer, here is my personal opinion. I have had a handful of clients where we have said, yeah, let's do the HRT route because of either they've been making the changes for a long time and their body is clearly so, 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 so depleted that the most urgent issue right now is essentially survival or we have um, maybe a client with uh, premature ovarian insufficiency, a totally different issue. 
Um, basically, if you, you have an ED so strong that you refuse to make changes, that is going to be your option. If you are ready and willing to make changes and actually implement advice, I don't understand why anyone would take the HRT route because it's not only going to mask things. Masking is an understatement. It's going to completely change the environment of the whole shebang. The whole situation is now out of your control and we've left the world of natural fertility. So if you're seeing this video and you're actually going down that route and wanting to um, recover naturally, while it surprises me, I have to say this, I do believe I have to say this, one cannot really pursue natural recovery and do fertility treatment at the same time. Can you pursue resolving your relationship with food and body while on HRT? Sure. And resolving those issues may put you in a better place mentally to then come off of the HRT and then pursue your goals. If you're so far from being able to actually make changes that are important for your health and your hormone status and health status is at an alarming point, that's your option. But you've got to be working on your ability to actually make changes. Um, while you're on it, then when you come off of it, you can understand your new baseline of actual hormones and then you can pursue natural recovery. There's not really a world where you're on HRT and you're making lifestyle changes that are like paying off a lot because now your body is dealing with the exogenous hormones and the body is so complex and the way hormones work and the way that they are aroused and the way that one stimulates the other stimulates another is so complex that we cannot simply just throw one or two specific hormones in a pill in our body and think voila it's going to fix anything not really right you're just throwing a whole lot of one thing in the situation and hoping that certain symptoms or certain other hormones arise and in some circumstances you're probably going to get some really, really great results. And in other circumstances, you're maybe going to get the opposite or almost nothing. You know, sometimes it's like, I don't know, what's a good analogy here? Like you have a garden that's so dead. It's been not looked after at all. It's so dead. All the plants are dead. The soil is just of no use. And you go and like throw in like some natural compost on the top and hope that like just throwing some natural compost on top is going to like suddenly rejuvenate the soil. No, you actually need to till it. You need to fertilize it more regularly. You need to put compost in regularly. You need to um, grow and nurture other small plants and then plug them, like put them in the resolved soil. And there's just so much more to it that like depending on how depleted your system is, the HRT is, a, you know, a, a desperate plea to stop the bone loss from happening. Um, and it's not going to have as good an effect as natural recovery will because your body does it better than the random pill, does it? Not to mention so often the dosage is like a shot in the dark. And then they got to work through it you you know depending on how good your doctor is you tell them i'm not doing well with the symptoms they tell you oh that's normal or, you know it really like everyone's situation is different and then of course you know with someone like you writing in to an email i mean i don't know the specifics i haven't seen your lab work i haven't gone through your history so this is just my opinion so if you are interested you know anyone listening working with us because we have had this influx of women going through or about to go through treatment Please know that like our services, while we can help you um, and we can help you make lifestyle factors to help make fertility treatments more effective, that is definitely a thing. Um, our bread and butter is helping you recover without any input from medicine. Um, and that is absolutely possible. 
for 99.99% of you guys. So that's a thing. I hope that that was helpful. And then the next question I have here uh, is from Amnit. Hi, Danny. I have been reading and watching so many of your videos. You've truly changed my mindset in how I was seeing myself. Thank you. I'm in a better place. I did get my recovery period and I ovulated. However, I'm going through a miscarriage. Oh, I'm so sorry. My question for you is, are, you herbal, are herbal supplements a good choice in recovery? Just wondering, as I want my body to do the work and I'm seeing a naturopath who is helping me. Right now I'm taking Chasta Tree, Femco and Ashwagandha. Some info, I have cut down on exercise, seeing it as movement for health rather than exercise to look a certain way and feeling myself with food that I actually want, food freedom. I do have a workout plan with real rest days. Love that. Um, good, easy question. I actually have a series on our website in our blog about um, the different like adaptogens like ashwagandha um, and talking about like the benefits and when they would be applicable. Chasta tree, chase tree, which is also known as Vitex. Have tried it with clients haven't had groundbreaking results that I would call it some kind of magical solution. Um, however, when we have somebody on the brink of recovery, so sometimes we have these like stubborn bodies that have they've made so many changes, their weight restored, they're eating, 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 and their body is actually showing some signs or it should be showing some signs by this point based on our experience. Um, for some reason it's being like stubborn. Um, the theory for us is just increased heightened sensitivity that the body is, or the brain is extra cautious with you. We will sometimes try something like, um, Vitex to help. It, it basically helps rise estrogen. So it's almost like this natural version of HRT, but just like HRT, you know, we're starting to leave the world of natural fertility when we take things like that, but we're certainly still like more in the, in the sphere of natural fertility than we are taking the actual medication route. Um, so I do not recommend this for anyone who has not been recommended it by a practitioner who has seen and confirmed that they are not over exercising, that they have replenished their weight probably to a certain point, um, that they're eating regularly enough, they're balancing blood sugar, they're working on stress. Those things must be in check as much as humanly possible. And then we want to see that you've tried this process for an extended period of time and given it enough time to work, which is usually about three months um, before we even really like throw that option in. So it's really, really case by case. And I would never make a blanket recommendation for people out there on a YouTube video that you should take this because it may really not be right for you. Um, but I have definitely seen it be effective for some people, get their periods for sure. Um, not necessarily ovulating, you know, or we might have it help someone to produce more cervical mucus during the time of conception. However, I can't prove to you that that's necessarily effective, but more cervical mucus seems to be better and does seem to result in pregnancy sooner. So it just depends. It just depends that there is a place for ashwagandha to help with stress, for Vitex to help with um, estrogen levels. If And you know too, like if someone's in a really stressful time frame of their life, we might throw something in where it's like, there's nothing we can do here lifestyle wise. If you're going through the most stressful time frame of your life, lost, divorce, something like that, um, and this is going to be ongoing for a while. I'm not just going to tell you to like try and get more sleep and like eat more. Okay, not delusional. We might start to lean on other ideas, but you need to be objective with yourself. Make sure you're not in Delulu land, right? Because that is still a, like a last ditch like effort. I hope this was a helpful episode for you guys. Um, really curious to know what you think. Have you tried HRT? Where, at the time of seeing this video, where are you at on considering that? Um, what types of things, challenges, questions have come up for you around treatment, herbal supplementation with HA? I'm curious what people are researching and where they're at in their journey. Um, 
let me know in the comments below. And if you have a question for the show, please also let me know in the comments below. I'm now answering questions via the comments. Um, and I just save them and I read them later on the show. Please also like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on a Friday video with one of these Q&As. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye.